Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, How to Create Captivating Digital Content for Your Nonprofit. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box that you see on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, all callers will be muted. So again, if you have questions, please use the Q&A box that you see on your, on your screen. Uh, if you lose your Internet connection, just reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. Um, sometimes ReadyTalk can be quirky, so uh, refresh your browser and just use the, connect, the link that was uh, emailed to you to reconnect. Um, if you have to leave early or if you want to watch the webinar again, it will be hosted on our website at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. Um, we'll also be sending an email with the presentation, a link to the recording, and any relevant links that were shared today. If you're on social media, feel free to send us a tweet at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. Um, but like I said earlier, we'll be using the chat box that you see on the left-hand side. Um, so just a little bit about uh, TechSoup. Uh, we are located in 236 countries and territories. We serve over a million nonprofits around the world providing uh, either donated or discount hardware and software. Um, so just to make sure that the chat box is working, if you guys want to chat in where you guys are calling in from, and I can read out a few. All right, we have Ottawa, Canada. Let's see, Boston, Texas, Kentucky. Anchorage, Alaska, um, Detroit. Do we have any international folks on the call? I did see Canada earlier. Brazil. We have somebody from Brazil. That's awesome. Um, great. Okay, so we can see the chat box is working. Um, so if you're curious about what uh, TechSoup offers, we partner with several technology companies like Adobe, Intuit, Microsoft, Symantec, and several others that you can see here on the screen. If you want to find out more about our nonprofit tech marketplace, you can visit our website at techsoup.org slash get-product-donations to see um, you know, what products are available to your nonprofit. So uh, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Seema Tucker. I'm the online producer here at TechSoup. Um, you've probably seen Lashika's name in the chat. She's the Associate Program Manager at TechSoup. And then today's uh, featured speaker is my colleague, Stephen Jackson. So he is the Digital Content Manager at TechSoup. Uh, he writes and produces blogs, articles, and videos, and coordinates the syndication and promotion of content across multiple channels here. Uh, he holds a Master's Degree in Learning and Instruction from the University of San Francisco and comes from a strong background in education, journalism, and media production. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Stephen. Okay. Uh, well, welcome everybody. And um, I'd like to first uh, just start off by saying uh, how much I appreciate everybody taking the time out of your day to uh, join us here. Um, I hope that everyone is able to take away some actionable knowledge from the time we spend together. So uh, I'm just going to dive right in and kind of go over the agenda, and we'll move forward from there. So. Again, we're going to be talking about digital content, and we're going to get into what that means and actually um, how to produce everything. And um, it's going to be uh, what I hope to be a very engaging time. But first thing we're going to do is start by going over some best practices in the art of storytelling. We're going to be taking a look at exactly what digital content is. Um, we're going to look at how to determine what type of content your nonprofit should be producing and when. Uh, we'll go over a little bit about producing content, some logistics items. Um, we'll talk very briefly about um, uh, uh, analytics and how to measure whether or not content is successful. And then finally, we'll sort of wrap things up with why it's important and really how creating all this uh, can benefit your nonprofit. So hopefully, um, if you do find yourself in a position where you're trying to sell the idea of producing digital content, you'll have that many more. Uh, the tools in your toolbox. So um, today our objectives are fairly simple, but we'll be talking quite a bit about developing a roadmap for producing digital content at your nonprofit. Uh, we're going to learn some tips to produce more captivating content. And we're going to uh, learn some of the basics behind digital content management at your nonprofit. So we are just going to jump right in here. 
Um, so storytelling. Best practices in the art of storytelling. Um, one thing to start with is the reason why people like to tell stories and the reason why people like to hear stories in general is because people are interested in connecting with one another. Um, whether or not this has to do with your friendships, your family, um, your colleagues, uh, or, or, or anybody that maybe you've even just met, people want to feel connected. But they also want to feel connected to ideas and causes. And uh, it's important to create things uh, that help people feel like they are a part of what you do. So um, this can look like a lot of different things. But it's all, again, it's really about building uh, this connection. So that can happen through sharing news about what your organization is doing. Um, that could happen through sharing helpful information that somebody uh, who is interested in the area of your cause can take with them to do maybe at their own nonprofit or maybe just in their own life. Um, and then inspiring stuff also helps build a connection. Um, so a lot of these have to do with uh, the idea of an emotional connection. But um, you can also create an emotional bond, a really strong one, uh, through education. And like Seema said, um, I, was, I was an educator uh, before I was, I was here, and I was a full-time writer and media producer. Uh, I was an educator for 10 years in San Francisco. Um, and then at the same time, I was also a local journalist in San Francisco. And it was during that time that I really learned how powerful it is to teach somebody something, uh, something useful. So in a classroom, that's one thing. If you're reporting on something that affects somebody uh, in their uh, local environment, that's important. That's something useful. Um, but what I learned through education is that it creates this immediate sense of trust with somebody when you can teach them how to do something. Um, now, at the same time, if you are doing this at your nonprofit and you teach somebody how to do something, you're also demonstrating uh, yourself as, a, as an authority on a certain subject. So if you know enough to share your information with somebody in a meaningful way, then all of a sudden you are presented as an expert. Um, and then l lastly, when you're, when you're teaching somebody something, and I mean in a lot of in the way I see it, um, in a lot of ways, it's sort of your mission in action too. It's, it's showing uh, that you do care about you know, affecting change in different places. You care, you care about helping people. Um, so I think it's really a win on a lot of different levels to focus on education and just understand how important that emotional connection is uh, when, when it comes to education and how you can build that. Um, so I'm going to be going through a lot of examples today. Um, and I'm just going to go through one very quickly here um, where I, with, with an organization that I think um, is really great um, and that I think um, really kind of creates some cool digital content. Um, so this is Sprouts Cooking Club. It's a local nonprofit here in the Bay Area. They do a lot of different work. They do a lot of work with teaching kids how to cook and thereby promoting healthy sort of eating habits and you know, uh, teaching people how to do a useful skill. But um, you know, here's an example of something that I found from their blog. Uh, up in California, we have this kind of small batch cheese uh, farm producer that's uh, up north of the city. And um, so the summer camp that this uh, organization did took a field trip up there. And so this is a great way that this um, organization was able to uh, uh, build a connection with people. You know, this is showing that, hey, we're out there. We're helping kids. Um, that, look, take a look at this cool stuff our organization is doing. Um, there, it's, it's really photo rich here. You can really get an idea right off the bat of what this nonprofit is all about. Right? And so when I saw this particular post, I was like, man, you know, I, I really feel connected um, to this nonprofit. I know, I know more about what they're doing. And I want to help those kids too. So how can I get them? Maybe you know, it might not go all the way that way, but in certain respects you can see how that could happen. Um, this, they also go um, the next step by actually providing cooking tutorials too, which I think is actually really, really cool because again, um, I'm this kind of education guy, and um, 
I just think this is such a neat thing because you can sit there, go to their site, learn about what they're doing, but you could also learn how to cook a dish yourself, even if you're not involved in the nonprofit. So right there, I think that's just a really great idea of building connection through storytelling. So I'm going to go back now, and um, the next part, of, the next important thing about storytelling is to remember that it's also about engagement. It's about engaging people. Um, so you want to draw or like kind of hook somebody into what you are writing immediately, right? So there's so much content everywhere, all over the place now, all over the internet. You want to be able to um, you want to be able to stand out in one way. And one old school kind of trick to that is creating a really valuable hook um, to draw your reader in immediately. And I'm going to give you two examples of that. But in one way, it could be a very bold statement. There's a whole sort of science behind writing a hook which you could go and do your own research on, but you really want to bring them in right, on the, right from, from the beginning. Um, but then another tactic is to really clearly state the value of that content near the very beginning. So um, to go back to an example of this, we're going to take a look here, sharing my screen once more. Um, So here's one example of uh, of a blog that I wrote um, for an organization that is dedicated to uh, securing land and by creating uh, land trusts and all that sort of stuff um, in the southeast portion of America. And this is a blog post I wrote where um, they were using a product they got through TechSoup um, in order to uh, back up data that, that quite literally helps them secure land by securing the data that secures that land. So sorry if that was a little securitist. But um, now a hook that I used was right here at the very beginning. Over the years, some of the most pristine land in the U.S., land with high conservation value has been recklessly destroyed. Uh, and the damage occurred because of careless residential and commercial construction pro projects, harmful industry practices, or other negligent actions by human beings. So what I was trying to do there was, was grab your attention with, with this thing that's happening that you shouldn't be mad about, so let's learn how to fix it. Um, another example of hooking someone in right off the bat is this piece where I was writing about how to broadcast uh, a live event. This is, again, this is like straight up educational content. But um, right here, if you see in this line, you know, I just go right out and say it. After reading this post, you'll be able to broadcast a Facebook live event of your own. Boom. So you, you, people don't have time to like weed through everything that you, you know, are trying to take this roundabout route to get at. They want to know if they're busy. I'm going to read this blog post and I'm going to learn this thing, right? And so you engage them like that. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of clarity. So information, when you're writing it, should be presented in a really structured manner. Um, it's really important that uh, it, it, it's, it, it's very easily and logically laid out. Right? Um, you also want to make sure that you're not using too many idioms or phrases, uh, especially if you're writing for a global audience. Um, a lot of times, you know, when we're talking, we we say a lot of really weird stuff, um, and that's because we speak in idiom and we speak in dialects, and there's all just sorts of different ways of speaking. But when you're writing, especially for a global audience, you want to try to stay away from those because even if somebody does speak the your uh, the language, even if someone is a knows how to speak the language in which you're writing, and it's their second language, those sort of turns of phrases will uh, throw people off. Be economical. Um, really, like what you want to do is, again, less is more. Um, there's a time for long, voluminous sort of prose, and, uh, and literature is one thing, but really when you're writing for the web and you're writing about trying to get something across to people, um, involved with your nonprofit, be economical, get to the point. Um, and then 
and that kind of goes into like this is sort of the mantra that I use a lot. And it basically when you're writing, one thing to keep in mind, you want to make your reader have to work as little as possible. Make them don't don't make them have to sort of work to figure out what this great you know high fluent point you're making is. You want it to be as laid out for them as much as possible so that they can just get what you're saying. And again, that's it's just more it's easier to read. You know, this isn't a webinar about how to write a novel, in which case it's really nice sometimes to have this dense, really uh, figurative language that's that, that you gotta crack the code of and then it presents itself as this beautiful thing for you. Uh, you know, we're we're talking about writing for the web. So make it work as little as possible. And if you uh, and one thing that is really great to pick up um, is the book Elements of Style um, by William Strunk Jr. and E. B. White. E. B. White later on. Um, it's just a great book. Um, you know, uh, you, if you get a chance, go to your public library, check it out. Or your local book bookseller, do do whatever it takes. But it, it really is. Uh, if you want to learn some of the true nuts and bolts of writing, that's a real must-have. Um, and uh, just as an example of that, of kind of clear writing, um, and won't be stopping all this much time. Excuse me while I pull this link up. Okay. Back here. Sorry about this. Okay. Um, so an example. Here, I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot more clear than this. Four things your nonprofit actually needs to do before 2019. Um, this is really structured writing here. Um, no guesswork. These are this is what you're going to learn. This is why you should learn it, and this is how soon you should learn it. And then it's really broken up here into um, four uh, distinct sections. Um, each section with a very specific message. Um, an actionable kind of item to it. Um, so this first one just talks about the, the trend of increasing remote, the increasing amount of remote workers. Um, and again, and then if, and we're sharing out these links, so if you get a chance, uh, you want to take a look. But um, we can it kind of continues like that. So uh, connection, engagement. Those are uh, all things to be rem re remember when you're going through and uh, thinking about digital content. So let's get right into it. Um, so what is digital content? It's a really broad term, um, and uh, there's a lot of different definitions. I think for the purposes here. The best thing to do is to understand it as it's media that we consume online, it, including but certainly not limited to articles, blogs, videos, both animation and live action, infographics, podcasts. Um, we're going to really be focusing on articles, blogs, and videos, but um, there is a uh, there, there's just so much out there, and I, and I actually grabbed a, just a cool link. It's like a hundred and one different types of digital content that. Um, uh, I believe uh, Lashika will be uh, sending out to the group right now. Um, you can get an idea of really like the depth and breadth of what we mean when we talk about in con talk about content. But digital content, articles, blogs, videos. It also refers to the stuff that that is just written on your website as well. And um, you know, there's a certain approach to landing page copy that is very different than writing blogs and things like that. Um, but we want to here uh, talk more about blogs, videos, articles. So, what what should what should digital content do? I think that's sort of a question that comes up a lot. You know, what 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 should it do? Well, the first thing it should do is and these are sort of uh, signposts, really, and um, to, it, this is like not. This is a very high level understanding of what it should be, what it should do. But the first thing you should think about is that uh, your content should be engaging. It should engage your audience. Um, and we, we went over that in the best practices section. But it should engage your audience um, in a couple different ways. So 
engagement can look like sharing news so that they feel like you're a part, they're a part of what you do. Um, and engagement can look like um, you went to this conference and you learned all this stuff and you want to go back and share with your constituents all the great things that you learned. Um, that, that's a way to engage. There's a lot of different ways to engage. Um, it should also inspire. This was, uh, this was like kind of the most inspirational looking photo that I could find. But like, you know, it, it should, it should uh, make people feel good about what you do. It should make people want to do more good work in the world. Um, you know, people should read your content and they should feel like, especially when we're talking about nonprofit stuff, like people should read what you're doing and feel the urge to go out and become a change maker in the world. That's not going to happen every time, right? That's an ideal situation. But um, you, know, you should keep in mind that it's really important to inspire people. And your and digital content has the ability to do that. Because rather than um, having sort of a, a quick hit about like, hey, this is what we do, a mission statement, boom. You know, you have a chance to sort of in a more long form fashion to go through and say, this is what we do and this is how we've affected so much change in this particular area and look at the lives that are better because of us and, and, and maybe you want to involve, volunteer or maybe you want to start a nonprofit of your own. But there's so much room for inspiration, especially in <clears throat> our industry. And lastly, again, this will come up a lot, you got to educate. You know, digital content, uh, in many ways, should be educating people um, and giving them information that they can read or watch or listen to and then use. Uh, and, and if we're talking about nonprofits, use to better the world. So the next question is, so what kind of content should my nonprofit produce? And on question one, the first question to ask, and this is really what's cool about content, is that it's this thing that happens at your organization that helps you or forces you to sit down and ask these foundational questions about yourself and your organization. So this, before you start creating content, the first thing you have to ask is, you know, who, who are we as a nonprofit? And what do we stand for? Um, it does this job of digging into what you're all about. You know, it's not just a tagline. It's not just a mission statement or a copy on a landing page. I mean, this is a chance to tell a story about who you are. Um, you know, another thing that you want to start thinking. Another thing that you'll think about is uh, asking yourself, what is your goal for creating content? You know. Is it, is it raising awareness about your cause? Are you writing to increase giving at your nonprofit? Or are you even trying to attract a new donor? Um, or are you just out there trying to educate the public? Um, so your goals should be very clear about creating content. And to be honest, it's probably a little bit of all four of these things, and maybe some stuff that I haven't listed there as well. And uh, lastly, you want to ask, what's our voice and tone? You know, who are we? Like, what's our personality out on the internet? What's our personality out in the world? So your voice has a lot to do with the character of your nonprofit. Um, it, 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 it helps define your personality, which is something that's difficult to do, especially when you're thinking about how people are viewing what you, who you are and what you do from an external vantage point. You are constantly in your own world. So you know what you do, and maybe the people that you've already been involved with know who you are, and they know the type of people you are, maybe from working with you in the field, or they just they understand your organization from a, very, a bunch of different channels. But if someone doesn't know that, your voice and in, in, in the tone that you're taking when you're creating digital content has, can really do some great work in terms of defining that um, element of who your organization is. And then last, you want to ask yourself, where will this content exist? Um, there's a lot of different channels, and we're going to go through all of that. But um, you know, a lot of it in there's some things that should be a blog. There's some things that maybe should be a longer form article. 
For some things that maybe you know, but it's just going to be something like a social post. Um, but, there, but whenever you're creating your content, you should always have the end game of thinking where is it going to uh, exist. Um, and that also has to do with you know, who's going to end, where's, where might this end up? You know, is this going to get picked up in some newsletter? Is this going to get shared, hopefully shared, around the Internet and then land somewhere else? So you always have to keep in mind about not just what you're creating, but what it's going to look like and how it's going to come across where it ends up, both um, in terms of where you know you're going to put it and also where it might end up. All right. So that's kind of a nice uh, segue into talking about media. So what kind, of, what kind of content should we produce? Um, how do we determine what the proper medium is here? So a blog, and, and these rules are all kind. These are all just sort of suggestions. Um, the cool thing is, depending on who you are, and depending on how you would like to be um, running your organization or running your content plan or anything, these things can be different for each organization based on your particular personality. Um, but so I'm just going to go through. This is how I see it, and this is how, to be honest, a lot of people see it too. Um, so the first thing, a blog. Um, these are gener this is generally shorter content. Um, it's a lot of times more relevant content, meaning that it could be something that uh, you, you know, you're writing and you're reporting on a field trip that you just did, kind of like that cowgirl creamery example from earlier, uh, or um, something that, again, like some of the other blogs I've already shown you that uh, have a very specific purpose. They're really scannable. They're really re readable, and they're generally shorter. Talking like think like 500 to a thousand words. Um, this tone can also be more conversational. So a blog in terms of voice and tone and your character um, as an organization, blogs are a great way to sort of show uh, who you are. So uh, next, next up is an article. Uh, in articles, um, this is an example here. Um, you can see the articles. This is the from the landing page of all of our articles. They're, um, they're, they're a little bit more serious. They're, they last a little bit longer, um, meaning that the, uh, they're, they're, they can be more in depth. They last longer both to read, but they also last longer in terms of being something called evergreen, um, which gets its name from the evergreen trees, meaning that you can post something and there's a good chance it's going to be just as relevant today as it will be a year from now. Um, and a lot of times the tone here tends to be uh, more formal. Um, another thing to consider here is uh, videos. So um, a video is usually shorter, uh, meaning that it's like about two minutes max unless you're doing a long form documentary or something to that effect. Um, this, here's an example of a video just a screenshot from our YouTube channel uh, of an animated explainer video that I produced uh, with, uh, with our team here at uh, TechSoup that um, explains, it kind of takes people through different uh, Microsoft uh, Office uh, options. Um, again, you know, a big thing with what we do is we, we provide nonprofits with, with low cost uh, Technology solutions, right? And so when we're not thinking about content that we're making for us, you know, I, if I want to educate somebody, I want to educate people on the way that um, <clears throat> this, uh, it, the way that they certain solutions like this can help people. So a great way to do that is through an animated explainer, and we'll and um, we'll have some time to take a look at some examples of that too. Um, but again, with video, the best thing you want to do is try to remember to keep it uh, short unless you are making an actual documentary. Uh, lastly, you know, an infographic, uh, these things should be data rich. It shouldn't just be a pretty picture. It should be something where a, a great rule of thumb is, okay, if I'm going to show somebody like a chart just full of numbers and jargon, and they're, not, that they're just going to glaze right over it, uh, if that would be better, um, explained with a bunch of graphics and visual aids, that probably means that that information would be a great candidate to be transformed into an infographic. Um, we, uh, it should be also used as like at a glance information. Think about it. Maybe it's something that they put up on the fridge um, at the office. 
or at your house or you know above your desk, um, so you can just look over if you really need some quick hits sometimes of of numbers or some kind of information like that, um, and it should be really easy to understand. So. You know, here's just a quick screenshot, um, and we'll go. I, I, in, in a second, I'm going to take us through some, some more in-depth examples here um, of an infographic we did here at TechSoup, where um, we were in illustrating the impact of our refurbished computer uh, initiative um, at TechSoup. And lastly, um, a social post. So this is going to be your shortest content. Uh, you can actually be a little bit more creative with this type of content. Um, and it's really supposed to be catchy. I and mean, social media, as we all know, is 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 this deluge of information now. And so, to stand out in social media is a very challenging thing. So, um, you want to really have an idea of what what your have a really strong grasp of how you want to look as an organization and how to uh, produce uh, visually um, enticing images that are going to make people want to click through. Okay. So let's go through and take um, a look at some examples. So I'm just going to pause for a moment while I pull while I pull those up. Give us all a moment to catch our breath. All right. Great. Okay. So here's an example of uh, what I feel to be engaging content. Um, some people from TechSoup went to this big Microsoft conference that happened in Las Vegas last month, and um, they they were tasked with kind of coming back and bringing some inform among other things they were tasked with bringing some information uh, for us to share with uh, the nonprofit community that we work with. Um, so they went and found some information that they felt uh, would be useful to our community. Um, I then took that information, did some interviews with the people who went, did some research, and found and broke it down into sort of some key insights. So in this way, um, we're, this is how we're engaging with our community by uh, sharing uh, information that's in, that, that's, that matters. It also shows that we're engaged in the tech community, um, that we're going out and we are keeping current on best practices, that we're out there kind of being who we are in the world as TechSoup. Um, and again, we'll be slacking out all these links. Um, just a quick also note, uh, we have a, just an awesome graphic design uh, department at TechSoup who helps us, who creates this, this, these uh, awesome uh, illustrations. You don't need all of that to create um, a a, a great image. There's a lot of options that we'll go over later about like how to source some of these images and things like that. But it is important, I think, to be including um, both images and text just because it's easier on the eyes. So again, uh, if we think about uh, examples that uh, of something that's meant to expire, this is that land uh, trust piece that I was talking about earlier. Um, I, I genuinely found what they do inspiring in terms of uh, uh, going out there and finding these uh, tracts of land and rivers and streams um, that are at risk of being developed upon and like messing up the whole ecosystem where they are. In, in this organization that went out and uh, is using law, uh, like uh, using law degrees to save the environment. Um, so I thought that was really cool, and um, I really enjoyed being able to share that. Um, another thing from the from an inspirational standpoint um, is uh, it, you want to you can create a video right that that really helps tell an inspiring story. The show oftentimes can elicit a much stronger emotional response. So um, we will be sending out this link too. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit play on uh, this video that we produced. Uh, with this organization called Remake. That's a storytelling organization that's dedicated to kind of exposing the, uh, uh, bad practices in the fashion industry and getting people to think about um, re 
re, uh, think about rethinking how they shop and, and buying clothes with some sustainability in mind. So um, we're going to we're just going to play this right from the player on our site, um, and just to give you an idea of sort of the tone and and the look and feel of a video like this. heavily on the Adobe suite of products to make our film shorts. Um, it is my dream that for every uh, label that's in your closet, you know, for every label you have a made in whatever country, India, Pakistan, China, Nepal, that I can show you a huge face. Our film short made in Pakistan actually won the Texas Global Impact Award, which is very exciting for us. One of the things that are in and our early adults as well is that t-shirts that we make in Photoshop where you know it has our token where your value. So um so again, uh, you, uh, we are sending out the uh, the link there, but you can kind of get an idea of uh, what we're trying to get across there and kind of create this uh, inspirational tiny little story. And the whole video only runs about under two minutes too. Um, when we're talking about education, uh, again, this was this li a Facebook Live event uh, post that I that I created a couple months back. Um, the idea is that with that, like, hey, this is a free thing that your nonprofit can do at your next event, and uh, you can create either here's this platform that might seem a little daunting to get used to or or dive into, um, but but it's not that hard. And if you take this little blog post, you can you you can share it with your team. And chances are you will be able to uh, do a Facebook Live event the next time that you're out. Um, this is a, it, it, so again, this is really just straight up educational content. Um, here is another. We're going to try the video audio again, and I hope it's going to be a little louder this time. But um, here's another. This is an example of an animated explainer that we did. Um, again, with the, with the very specific. Uh, idea in mind to educate people about how this uh, particular Office 365 license could um, that's very affordable can like help other nonprofits uh, power their volunteer staff um, without having to get the full blown versions of this software that could save money. And so this is sort of explaining to people, hey, how this can help you and learn more. Um, so let me show you this real quick. Does your nonprofit work with lots of volunteers? If so, consider FY licenses of either Office 365 or Microsoft 365. FY licenses are useful for volunteers or employees who only need limited access to Office 365 features. These licenses are available for a small monthly fee. You can also turn monthly subscriptions on and off to fit your requirements. You only pay for what you need when you need it. Um, so, so that goes on, and uh, it's it, it's really this is kind of really standard explainer video type of uh, animation. It's two uh, D. It's really clear, um, and it, it, one thing that your nonprofit could do is. Uh, make one of these types of animated explainers, or a live action like the other one that that I showed you, that just basically explains who you are. Um, it, it just an about us sort of. This is what my organization, my organization does. This is who we help. Um, if you want to learn more, continue to play around on our website. Um, which is another thing I should mention uh, when we're going through these examples, is that one thing about content is. A big goal should be bringing, your pe bringing people to your website 
from maybe the post was shared on social, or maybe that someone included it as an attachment in, or as a link in an email, that they get back to your site, they understand who you are, they understand what you're all about, and then they're encouraged to continue to sort of play around on your site and maybe look at some work that you're doing, or maybe decide to volunteer, or anything like that. Um, content is really great at bringing people from the outside into your world. Um, so another, here's an example of, uh, of an article, longer form. Uh, this is educational content. Um, we, everybody's talking about moving to the cloud computing lately. You can't go really anywhere without anybody talking about it, like a cloud migration or something to that effect. Um, so we picked up on that, and uh, we wanted to explain to people you know, some really basic high-level steps that they need to take to migrate successfully to the cloud. Uh, we uh, had our very own Michael Enos uh, guest, guest blog, uh, guest write this article. Um, it is a, it is a great example, right, of, of a hook too. It's just, I mean, there you go. This is what you can learn. Um, it's longer form, uh, unless everything that's happening, with, but everything that's happening with the cloud was going to obviously change inevitably. But we, um, this will last quite a bit. Um, this is a high level enough too that it will sort of stay evergreen for a while, um, and it takes you through some really great. In, insights and information. Um, so I also want to uh, take us over to this infographic um, that I should do just a screenshot of. But I'm, what I'm going to do here is just kind of slowly scroll through it. Um, so we have this refurbished hardware program where um, we are able to basically recycle computers and get them out into the hands of people who need them. Um, and so uh, this was during April. This was kind of surrounding Earth Day. Um, we decided to uh, publish, uh, to make, to create this infographic that takes you through um, some of the key data. So, so it gets, in, gets you into the numbers. I mean, this is so much more interesting to look at than a spreadsheet, right? Um, and it's not like you could really, in good conscience, publish a spreadsheet on a blog and. Expect people to read it. Um, let me go through here. Sorry. And um, all right. So let me switch back over to some examples. Um, excuse me. All right. So let's get back over to some examples of uh, some social posts. Here is an example of a post we put up on for Mandela Day. Um, so this is a, just a great image, a great inspiring quote. Um, it helps explain, it does help to define who we are um, as an organization and what we stand for, right? By, 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 by celebrating this day and by including this quote, you, you, you can see more about you know, what we're all about and where we're coming from. Uh, we also here, we, we were aware that Mandela Day was this trending topic on social media. And so we wanted to jump on that trend. And that, there's a whole sort of strategy to, uh, social, to planning your social media uh, operations. And I'm not going to get into that at all. But it is important to notice that we did want to include this because we knew this topic would be trending. Um, people come back, and again, we're just trying to get people to interact with this more. Uh, here's a great example of an Instagram post that just shows our office culture, one thing that people use content for, um, which is uh, very uh, important, is to show people what's the, what's the culture of your nonprofit? What are you guys all about? If they don't know you, they don't know you, unless, and unless maybe you show them certain uh, pictures of the, the people at your office and what you do uh, is enrichment activities, um, they're not going to know that. So in this case at TechSoup, we do something called Walking Wednesday, promoting you know, healthy lifestyle, all that kind of stuff. And this is, a, uh, this is a, a, a group of our employees who are out on a Walking Wednesday. So um, you know, social media posts can be quick hits like that, and uh, but get a lot of really interesting, kind of really get your point across in a really unique way. Um, Social is a great place to share 
articles with your community, especially if you get a lot of followers and you have something where you think it's going to be really useful information to them. You know, reposting things with, uh, with, with, uh, with intentionally reposting things where, you're, where it says something about who you are and what your values are is really important. This kind of is um, you know, a, fo a focus on how to attract millennial workers to nonprofit organizations. Um, and again, it, 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 this does add to our voice, and it does contribute to um, how people see us as an organization. So content, you're creating content, but the way in which you're intentionally sharing content is also very important. Okay, so um, let's get down to the logistics, and I definitely am going to be mindful of the time here because I want to be able to open this up to questions too. Um, so the first thing when you're talking about producing content, uh, you want to be choose a content management system. And that word and that whole term, I know if you're not like involved in it, it can sound freaky, but really what it is is that like it's it's a content management system is what you're using to produce content on the internet. Uh, the majority of websites in the world are produ produced on something like WordPress, WordPress, which has a blog function. Um, uh, there's also kind of paid things like Squarespace and HubSpot and all those sorts of things that um, the, that help you produce content, visual content, and written content on the back end. Um, but the truth is, you can also use something free, such as Medium. Uh, there's nothing stopping anybody from creating a Medium account. There's also free um, WordPress accounts as well. Um, you want to just choose whatever you're going to be using uh, to produce this content. Get to know it. Take the tutorials and all that. Um, if you already have a website, um, take a look at what it's hosted on. A lot of times there's a blog function already built into it. Um, uh, so it, the, the bottom line is you just choose and get to know some sort of system, content management system. Um, the next thing you want to do is develop some kind of project management system. Now, there's a lot of really intense project management tools out there. Um, and we're not really going to go into them. Uh, and so, but the bottom line is you want to come up with a system that's determining basic the following things. Who does what? What's the timeline for producing a piece of content? Where are the images being sourced? There's a lot of free um, images, uh, places to source images all over the Internet. Um, or you can be taking your own photos. Or you can be asking constituents to allow you to use photos. Uh, what's the process of uh, quality assurance? You know, who's, who's doing the copy editing? You should have a copy editor, have somebody, at least at least have one other person than yourself take a look at anything you publish. It's really important. Um, you know, who's taking a look? What, what's, what is that process? And it could be really basic. It could really be you showing your coworker this piece of content, them approving it, put it up. You know, there's a lot of you can go really, really in depth into content, or you could do things um, in a very accessible, very easy way. So just have something that that there's a process of quality assurance, and then having it determined about who's publishing what and and, and how that schedule works. Okay. Um, we are also going to be looking at how to build an editorial calendar in developing a syndication plan. So let me share my screen once more. I think this might be the last time I'm doing it. Um, okay. So we are taking a look now at a content calendar. And again, a lot of really expensive tools that, that can be used here. But um, you can also do something you know, using your existing, uh, you know, you, you, using existing tools that you likely have you're using at your nonprofit in this case. You know, here's a sheet that basically just takes you through week one through four of a month and the days of the week. And right here you can see that um, there's, some inten there's intentionality about the type of content that we're producing on a certain uh, a specific schedule throughout the month. And that, um, that can change for you. This is a really, really generic uh, version of that. You know, Mondays we do organizational news, Tuesdays educational content, Wednesdays success story, Thursdays thought leadership. I mean that could be 
uh, you know, uh, two minutes with our founder on the state of education in America, or something to that effect, and then Friday leave something open for uh, the inevitable variability that you want to have in your content. And then I like to use, um, so, so this is a great view here to give you kind of to plan. And then you also want to kind of create sort of a syndication plan too. So as you're developing, oh, a blog is going to happen on this day, and an article is going to happen on this day, and maybe finally a video will happen down then. However you want to be doing this, up to you. But this is an example of how, to, how you should at least be thinking about creating content and producing it. Um, it's really easy to also do the same thing in a calendar view. I only did, since, it, since in this example I repeated uh, the two weeks uh, it's twice throughout the month. This is just an example of a two-week plan. Helps you really see what's going on. You can also use any functionality in that calendar to assign the plan to people. Um, you can really hack um, project management um, for the, uh, using the resources that you have at your disposal quite easily. Um, so the bottom line is, is that the, the philosophy is the same. Is that you should at least know what you're doing, who's doing it, when they're doing it. Kind of basics. All right. I'm going to move over to um, the idea of just measuring good content. Um, you know, there's a lot of different. The Google Analytics is free. Um, there's a lot of different sort of uh, paid uh, ways to be measuring how people are engaging with their content. You can also be looking at your social media statistics, how many likes and how many shares, and all that stuff goes. But the bottom line with um, taking sort of in stock. Of how you, the bottom line is to do this. Take stock of how your content is doing online. And that should help inform some decisions about what type of content you should continue to do, what type of content you should be doing less of. Um, it's, it's all, um, it just comes down to the idea that you shouldn't be just creating content, throwing it into the wind, and not paying attention to it again. It's really important to come up with some sort of way that works for you to determine what uh, successful content is and what isn't. Um, and again, the whole idea of analytics when it comes to content is an entire can of worms that we won't be um, d diving into right now. So to wrap things up, why is digital content important? Basically, because it defines who you are as an organization. It, it says what you're all about. Um, this is beyond just web copy. It's beyond, um, uh, it, it's beyond like your mission statement. It's something that you get to really dive in and say, this is what we are, this is who we are, and this is what we do and why. Again, digital content is important because it's able to engage, uh, inspire, and educate the people um, who are interested in your in your mission and everything you do as a nonprofit. Um, keeping these, these sort of three things in mind um, it is a really good idea in terms of uh, how do we how, how to make sure that you're staying on the right track with creating this type of content or any kind type of content. Um, digital content is important because it provides value. Um, providing it makes it so that your website isn't just a place to go donate money. It's not just a place that exists on the internet. It's a place that is valuable to people. It means that there, it's a destination. That if you create genuinely helpful or genuinely inspiring or genuinely engaging content, people find your site valuable and they want to keep going there. And once they're there, they want to learn more about what you're about. So they, and that might be what it's really all about right there. Um, it, it's, it's with, because if you think about it, if you weren't creating these stories online, how would people know? Um, from a, a, a nuts and bolts uh, perspective too, content helps you rank higher in, in Google search. Um, it gives people something to share. Um, if you're not creating a blog post, what are you sharing of your organization other than just the link to your organization online? Um, and again, it, it, it establishes your site as a destination for a certain topic, as an authority, you're, you're an authority on a certain subject. And then lastly, content helps people make decisions. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you, you're, wanting, you, you're running an organization, you're helping people, and you want people to be there along with you. 
And uh, whether that maybe looks like attracting donors, maybe that looks like attracting people to want to volunteer to decide to pitch in and help your cause. Or maybe at the very end of the day, it's as simple as just sharing a great blog post that they wrote on your site. They read it on your site and they decide to share that with their own community. Um, great digital content um, really does a great job of pushing that needle and um, helping people to make decisions ultimately to uh, support all the great things you do. Okay. Um, so I, uh, I'd like to I thank you. First of all, thank you guys so much for already just uh, sticking, sticking with us and sticking with me as we were uh, going through a lot of content, <laughs> a lot of information in the past uh, about 40 minutes, I suppose. And um, I'd like to open up uh, this webinar to some, dis some, some, some discussion and some questions. And so um, I will be uh, taking a look over at some questions that have been uh, chatted over to me now. Yeah. Hi, Stephen. Um, I, can, I can go Hi. ahead and uh, uh, send you some of the questions that people have been asking. Um, just to be mindful of the time, we have about three minutes left. So um, I think there are uh, one of the questions that we got um, a few times was um, in terms of frequency and how often people should be posting, um, you know, what is your recommendation, especially for a you know, smaller nonprofit that has limited resources? Oh, okay. Um, so uh, in, the idea of how much you should be posting is really a function of what the bandwidth is that you have at your organization to do uh, quality content. Um, you, you, so you want to do as much as you can without spreading uh, people too thin. But uh, in terms of how much you should be posting, it is good to post with a certain amount of consistency. Um, so. But uh, you don't want to just post once one week and then post five times the next week and then post maybe two times the next week. Uh, you want to create a certain cadence um, of how you're putting content out there so that people can learn to expect when they should be seeing something new on your site. Perfect. Um, okay, and then another question that we got. When you were showing the Microsoft um, animated video, uh, people are wondering what tool you use to create that video, or if you have any recommendations on, you know, resources to make animated videos. If, if um, yeah, um, budget. Totally. Yeah, especially if you're on a budget. Um, going to any of these online marketplaces uh, that um, where, where sort of there's there's a global community of freelancers that um, are uh, ready to bid on jobs for you to uh, create a simple animated explainers. Um, we used uh, you know, we we used a, um, a, 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 an affordable animation studio uh, that, that just that basically uh, they they specify in this this type of thing. Um, the price points for these animations are really varied. I've seen things for a few hundred dollars, um, and uh, so there basically there's things like the Envato market. There's things like uh, Fiverr and different sites like that um, where you can take a look. And there's there's hundreds of offers for affordable animation services. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think also for um, just you know to let everyone know for social media, there's also Resources available um, like Hootsuite. So if you can't, you know, post them on your own, you can schedule stuff in advance so that you're not having to go in there every day to to post things. So, um, do you want to maybe talk uh, about a few, you know, recommended tools for um, someone who has a small team to to use to to to, to blog with? Uh, to blog, yeah. So like, if somebody you know doesn't have the um, capability to blog on their site, or if social media, you know, going in every day and posting becomes a little bit difficult, you know, just in terms of common tools for a content creator. Oh yeah. So uh, again, you know, Medium is a great way to set up uh, your own blog right off the bat. Uh, there's WordPress. Um, again, is a very common tool. They have a lot of different um, themes and sort of skins that will make your site look really uh, unique. And um, there, there's there's free WordPress sites. It's, it's initially free, but it, um, it's also at a, on an annual level. It's it's very affordable to um, get some do, to do something on uh, WordPress. Uh, I mean, uh, let me think. What else? 
I would say I mean I would say I'd focus on on those two or take a look at um, if there's a blog function on the type of theme that you have using a different site. Uh, like some people use when you create their sites on Wix, and um, there's definitely different themes in Wix that um, that that support a blogging function, and they have a little blog tab on them or not. And so I would just take a look when you're searching for different themes in these um, uh, things like Squarespace or Wix. Um, or WordPress that you just in your search term make sure that uh, that site uh, supports uh, blogging or like kind of a media player or anything else that you imagine you might need. Perfect. All right. So I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, thank you, Stephen, so much for today's presentation. Uh, thank you to everyone who attended today um, and asked questions. Hopefully, you guys all learned a lot. Um, if you guys don't mind, it's always really helpful for us to hear your feedback. So if you don't mind just chatting. Uh, one thing that you learned in today's webinar. Um, you'll also be receiving a post-event survey. So if you don't mind taking a couple minutes to answer, I think there's about five questions on there. It really helps us dictate future content. So um, you should be receiving that once you close out of ReadyTalk. Also, if you're on social media, uh, feel free to give us a follow. We're on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. We're also on LinkedIn. Um, so please uh, give us a like, heart, follow whatever the, the actions are on each of those. And then also we have our blog which is blog.techsoup.org. Um, we post fairly frequently there with tips and tricks. So if today's webinar was helpful, um, we try to post you know, things that are useful to you there as well. Um, and then just uh, if you are available, we have upcoming webinars on our website www.techsoup.org. So uh, keep an eye out for future webinars. Um, again, thank you Stephen today for today's presentation. Uh, thank you to our sponsor ReadyTalk, and thank you to Lashika for answering questions on the back end, and we hope to see you guys soon.